What terminology does the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, otherwise known as Mormons, use that you as Christians need to know if you're going to effectively share the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. Welcome, this is People of the Free Gift, where we ground believers in their identity in Christ and equip them to reach those caught in religion. If you're new to the channel, click that subscribe button so you don't miss any future content related to cults and how to reach them with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Today, we're going to be talking about my book, Sharing Jesus with the Cults, and we are taking the most popular videos related to it on YouTube, and we're breaking them down even further. And by far, my most popular video to date is uh, the LDS Plan of Salvation, and we have several other videos on Mormonism that you can go and check out in the playlist in the description down below. And uh, so today, we're going to be talking about terminology specific to the LDS Church. The problem that a lot of Christians encounter when they talk to somebody of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is that they have a conversation with them and ask them very basic questions that they would ask just about anybody about finding out whether or not they believe in the gospel that we do. And so they'll ask them things like, do you believe that Jesus died and rose again from the dead? Yes, I, I believe that. Do you believe that Jesus is God? Yes, I believe that. Uh, do you believe this in salvation by grace through faith? Yes, I believe that. And they would say, oh, I don't, I guess we believe the same thing. I thought we thought that Mormons believe something different, but I guess they don't. And the problem with that conversation is that there were two separate conversations going on. One, a Christian view of every one of those terms that was used in those sentences. And then the Mormon uh, definitions of everything that was said in those sentences. And so I'm going to break down for you something, that, and I do this in the book, and in every section related to the cults that they have specific terminology, I break it down for you, at least some of them, so that you have a fighting chance of having a head start when you talk with them and being able to spot some of the things. And the best thing to do is just to get people to clarify their terms. And what do they mean? And asking the question, when you said that, what do you mean by that? When you said grace, when you say salvation, when you said Jesus, what do you mean when you say that? And getting them to articulate what they actually believe and how they define those things will help you a long way. And had the person who had that initial kind of scenario conversation that we just talked about done that, they would have discovered, whoa, 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 we believe very, very different things. And uh, we're not even in the same ballpark here. Um, and they would have been able to ask some clarifying questions, and they would have been able to have an intelligent conversation in which they uh, compare and contrast their beliefs and their viewpoints on different scriptures. So I'm going to break down for you um, some terminology that the Mormon Church uses in relation to uh, terms that you might be familiar with. And so first one is Adam. And uh, so the LDS believe that Adam is the father of physical mankind. Adam is also known as Michael the Archangel in the Ancient of Days, Doctrine and Covenants 116. Atonement. The LDS Church believes the sacrifice of Christ that made resurrection possible along with the possibility of our earning forgiveness of sins. Basically, what they believe about Jesus' death is that everyone is guaranteed resurrection because Jesus rose and they all go to a level of heaven. But your works and the law in which you live your life determines which level of heaven you're going to go to. And so the Aaronic Priesthood, the LDS, a lesser priesthood in the LDS Church, is still used in LDS Church practices and is held by the very young. Doctrine and Covenants 107, 1, 6, and 10. Baptism, a necessary ordinance for salvation in the Mormon Church. By it, sins are washed away. Bible, the Bible is correct only as far as it is correctly translated. It is basically trustworthy. It is the only one of the four standard works, Bible, Book of Mormon, Doctrine and Covenants, and Pearl of Great Price, that is not considered infallible. The King James Version is the official Bible of the LDS Church. And I would throw on there with the caveat that when they need to, they will go to the... Uh, the Joseph Smith translation, which he did claim was finished, but because the rights are owned by one of the other splinter groups, they don't use it officially as their Bible and as their doctrine. And that allows them also to maintain their belief that the Bible has not been translated or transmitted correctly, and so they can prefer their scriptures over ours. Bishop is an office in the Melchizedek Priesthood of the LDS Church. 
And it's kind of the equivalent of our pastors, except that they're not paid. Uh, they do receive reimbursements, uh, which can add up quite substantially, um, but they are not uh, paid in the same way that we would. So Doctrine and Covenants 2067. Celestial heaven, the highest of the three levels of heaven where faithful Mormons are exalted to Godhood. Church, the LDS Church with its organizational structure, laws, and proper name. Damnation, basically anything lesser than exaltation, uh, which means becoming a god. Devil, see Satan. Elohim, the name of God the Father. Eternal life, exaltation. Exaltation to a Mormon means obtaining godhood in the celestial kingdom. So right there, eternal life for them is exaltation. It's godhood. So there's a difference between being saved and being having eternal life. A great question to ask them is, do you know that you have eternal life? Because 1 John 5.13 says, John says, I wrote these things to you so that you may know that you have eternal life. When a Mormon shares their testimony in church, uh, they share, I know that the Book of Mormon is true. I know that Joseph Smith is a true prophet of God. Um, these, all these that I know are related to the church and their scriptures and their belief system, but they never share, I know that I have eternal life. And yet that's a biblical thing that God wants us to know. So exaltation, the state of becoming a God in the celestial kingdom, fall of mankind, a blessing, Mosiah 3, 11 through 16, a necessary step in the progression of humanity to the level of Godhood. You may not know that, but God planned and even wanted Adam and Eve to fall because they call it a fall upward where it allowed them to become gods in the future instead of being eternally stunted and stuck at that place. Um, before that, they, they, they don't believe that Adam and Eve were able to reproduce, so they weren't able to obey the other command to be fruitful and multiply that God gave them. And so God, one of countless gods in existence, an exalted man from another world who created the earth, whose name is Elohim, he became a god by following the laws and ordinances of his god on the other world. He has a body of flesh and bones. Doctrine and Covenants 130, verses 22 and 23. Godhead. An office held by three separate gods. The Father who is a God, Jesus who is a God, and Holy Spirit who is a God. Gospel, the laws and ordinances of the Mormon Church. Heaven, divided into three kingdoms, celestial, terrestrial, and telestial. The celestial is for perfect Mormons, the terrestrial is for moral people, and lukewarm LDS, and the telestial kingdom is for everyone else. Hell, the temporary abode in the spirit world between death and resurrection for those awaiting celestial glory. Doctrine and Covenants 76, 84, and 85, and verse 106. Hell will come to an end. Holy Ghost, a spirit man. He can only be at one place at one time. Mormon Doctrine by Bruce McConkie, page 359. The Holy Ghost is contrasted with the Spirit of God, which is the influence of the Godhead that fills the immensity of space, which enables God to know what is going on. It is likened to electricity. Doctrine and Covenants 130, 22, and 23. Holy Spirit, the presence of God is distinguished from the Holy Ghost who is a God in the Mormon Trinity. Jehovah, the name of Jesus in the Old Testament. Jesus, little offspring of God the Father, spirit brother of Satan, a God in the Godhead. He is Jehovah of the Old Testament compared to Elohim being the Father. He was the first spirit child to be born to the Father and Mother of Gods, ordained as the Christ in the pre-existing Grand Council before coming to earth. Kingdom of God. Celestial kingdom, the kingdom of God on earth, is the LDS Church. Marriage, an eternal bonding of husband and wife that continues into the afterlife. These couples will continue to have children. Doctrine and Covenants 132, 15-20. Melchizedek Priesthood, a greater priesthood in the LDS Church held by elders. Doctrine and Covenants 107. We existed in heaven with God, our literal father and mother, before we became human. Salvation. Twofold meaning simple bodily resurrection of all people or the forgiveness of sins. One was accomplished by Jesus' death on the cross. The other is achieved by your works and good deeds. Satan, the opposer of God, literal son of God, brother of Jesus and all people begotten in the pre-existent spirit world. Scripture, Bible, Book of Mormon, Doctrine and Covenants, Pearl of Great Price. Temple, a present-day temple used to practice the ordinances and ceremonies of the gospel of the LDS Church on behalf of the living as well as the dead. Trinity, 
three gods. A god called the Father, a god called the Son, a god called the Holy Ghost. So you can see right there they have a misunderstanding of what we believe when we talk about the Trinity. And we have several videos that relate to that as well. And so if you have an insight or a question uh, related to this topic or anything related to cults and sharing the gospel with them, please share that in the uh, comments down below. I'll be choosing some of those for next week's Q&A. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Give us a thumbs up on this content if you like the content for today. And share this video with others who are interested in cults and how to share the gospel with them effectively. And so uh, I talked about an announcement and it pertains to our study through the Bible material on this channel. And uh, uh, as of this moment, I have taken all of the, or I've, all of the content that pre-existed is staying on the channel, but I've moved it also onto another channel called Study Through the Bible. So all future content related to the Bible is going to be on that channel and all co content related to the cults and how to share the gospel with them will be on this channel channel and that will allow the two specific groups of people who subscribe to this channel to be unique and specific and so if you like both content then go over there subscribe to that channel if you just like the cold content then you're going to get more of what you love on this channel and if you want the link uh, to get over there to subscribe then I'm going to have it in the description in the cards and the end screens on this video and so until next time may God's grace be with you